What's the best type of shot to play when your ball is nestled down into the grass, longer rough around the green? So you've got a short shot but from a bad lie. Today's video, I'm gonna give you another option that perhaps you haven't thought of before. Welcome back to the True Golf Academy. You've joined me, John Watts, today at Branston Golf and Country Club. As I mentioned there in the intro, today's video is a short game shot. So I've got around 10 yards to the edge of the green, but the pin's on another 15 or so. I've got a bunker to go over. That's not worrying me too much, but my ball is gonna be nestled down here towards the bottom of the rough. So if it was sitting okay, I'd just play a normal chip and run or pitch shot, but today I'm gonna to give you a different option a shot that perhaps you haven't tried before that might really work for you when you've got a bad lie, but you want a short shot, you still want to get that ball to stop. So I'm going to be using my max loft here. So I've got 58 degrees. So if you've got a lob wedge, perhaps use that. If you haven't, at least a sand wedge. I'm going to be trying to give myself that bad lie. I've stood in some of this grass. So let me uh, just find a lie for you. I'm just going to actually go the other side of my cane and nestle that ball down in the grass. So almost the top of the ball is just below the top of the grass level there. That ball's really nestled more downwards. Now, the only way for me, I think, to play this and still get some height and some stopping power, especially if that flag was closer to me, is to think of it more of a bunker shot. The other benefit of me thinking of it more of a bunker shot is I have that margin of error. I know I cannot get that ball cleanly. There's no way I can strike the ball without getting some grass. So let's accept that we're gonna get some grass. We've got some long, lush rough here. It's quite a low point, uh, maybe a little bit of runoff area for some of the water. We've got very lush, very thick grass. That ball's nestled down here. Let's not worry about trying to get it cleanly. Let's accept that we're gonna hit the grass and try and play it more of a bunker shot. So what would I do in a bunker shot? I'd be aiming for around two inches, five centimeters behind the golf ball and make a longer swing than I think really necessary if I was chipping or pitching the shot to get the momentum. So knowing that the grass is gonna grab the club. Now, depending on how sort of gnarly that rough is, how thick, how juicy that rough is, if you like, will depend on how much it slows the club down. So the thicker the rough, the more the club is gonna be slowed down from the rough itself. So you've gotta be making a longer, more committed swing. So you've gotta have that judgment, like you would in a bunker, of whether there's lots of sand or not much sand. If there's loads of sand in the bunker, you need a longer, more committed swing. If there's less sand in there, you can actually play it with a little less speed. So you've got to really try and think first of all of the lie and how that's going to react when you strike it and maybe have some practice swings, just getting used to it, how that club's going to be dragged and slowed down. So I'm going to be using my max loft club. I'm going to pretend I'm in a bunker. So I'm going to move the ball forwards in my stance towards my left heel. I'm gonna be setting my pressure onto my lead side so my sternum is nearer the golf ball. I don't want to push my hands forwards because that's gonna deal off the golf club and lower the bounce. I'm gonna actually have my handle more level. If I'm opening the face, which I am on this one, and I do on most bunker shots, I'm gonna open it before I grip it. And I'm gonna be making a long committed swing. So a good sort of chest height to chest height. Let's give one a go. So ball is forwards. I've opened the flight, face like I'm in a bunker. Weight is forwards or pressure is forwards. My sternum feels over the ball, but my hands are about level with the golf club. And I'm gonna be making a very long, committed golf swing like I'm hitting a bunker shot. That might be a fraction too long. It landed, it stopped very quickly actually, landed exactly where the flag is. So it's just rolled about five foot past just towards the back edge of the green there. But I got a long divot, I took a lot of rough. That came out quite nicely. Uh, all I do is, is obviously learn from that, learn from the shots that you're playing. I don't think that was too far off what I was really looking for. So let me try one more, burying it down in the grass. I don't want to give myself a good lie, there we go. Lush grass underneath, I'm going to accept that the club is going to be slowed down from the grass itself and think of it as a bunker shot. I'm looking at a point around two inches, five centimeters behind the golf ball, accepting that is my 
spot. I'm forgetting about the golf ball. My pressure is forwards and I'm thinking about hitting a bunker shot. So just took a little bit of distance off that one and that one's come up just a few feet short of the flag. But I, you know, I take both of them from a, a bad lie around the edge of the green. The first one came up perhaps a little hotter than I thought. You've got to think about the lie first. How much is that club going to be slowed down? Practice swings are vital in short game. I don't think they're so vital in long shots unless they relax you or prepare you for what you're trying to be doing. But short game is the time I would have some practice swings just to get used to what the contact's going to feel like. And actually th start thinking about if the lie is poor, if you, if you can't get that ball cleanly, could you play it as more of a bunker shot? You can see they worked out pretty well from there. You know, it's a tough shot out of a bad lie, but I've given myself, you know, a, a par saving putt. I've given myself around five feet or so on both of them. And I would take that from this situation. If this video has helped, make sure you hit the thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel for all the other content. It's great to uh, hear from you guys, any videos you'd like me to film, anything that I can help with, make sure you get in touch.